I show you easy steps to make your own armor plating for any type of military vehicle or any other type of vehicle that you may want armor plating on, such as maybe a model of a plane, a model of a car, just depending on what you are looking for as in terms of wanting rusty armor plating on your vehicles. So, why don't we get to the video? I decided to make this video to show everybody how to achieve that rusty armor plating seen on some of those heavy modern equipment pieces like the M1074 transports seen in Iraq. With the insurgency that's been occurring in Iraq, US military personnel were forced to protect themselves using methods deemed necessary to avoid being easy targets for surprise road attacks on their vehicles. I'm sure there are many ways to get the results we're working to achieve here, but this is just one of them. Items I use to get the job done. Any old pair of scissors. Apple cider vinegar. One to three millimeter thick, non-rust-free metal plate. Remember, the thicker the plate, the more difficult it will be to cut with a normal scissors. A sharp blade or knife, only if needed a small bowl that will fit the pieces needed for the required project, a spray bottle with water. I'm sure there are many ways of achieving this effect, but this is my own. Others may have a much easier or better method, but like everything else, it's up to the individual modeler to find what works best for them. I will now try and take you through a couple of short, easy steps using my methods. The first thing to do is to decide on the design of the armor plating by making a sketch of it on a piece of paper. When done, cut it out according to the scale you want it to be. Now take the sheet of metal and cut out a piece that you will need for the required project. Take the pattern that you have made and place it on the sheet of metal. Now using one hand to hold the pattern and the metal plate, take a pair of scissors and cut the metal according to the paper pattern you had just made. When done, the results should be similar to the paper pattern you made. When you are satisfied with your design pattern, then you are ready to age your armor plating. Pour a reasonable amount of apple cider vinegar in a bowl, so that when you put the metal in it, it will submerge covering the entire surface of the metal. Now leave the metal piece submerged in the apple cider vinegar for about 30 minutes. When the 30 minutes are up, remove the metal and place it on its side to dry so that the rusting process can begin. Now you will have to help the process along by spraying water in between drying intervals. This way, the rust will build up layers as the effect gets stronger. It takes a while, but the results are worth it. You can also lay the metal piece flat and spray a couple squirts of water to get the rust buildup to settle in one area. Just spray and let it dry. Remember, spray in intervals. This way, the first layer will have time to develop and settle. The pictures show the results between five and 10 minute intervals of spraying after it was removed from the bowl three hours ago. You'll notice that as long as you leave the metal submerged in the liquid, the metal will remain in its original state and therefore will not rust. If you want more rust effect, just spray some water on it. You can see how long it takes the plate to reach a more desirable effect than normal. The idea is to build the rust up in layers. When the metal has rusted and you are satisfied with the look, then it is time for a bit of weathering. Where the metal had extremely settled, I take a sharp knife or hobby blade and scrape away at some of the rust at various areas of the metal. Again, this method is only required if the rust has settled hard on the metal plate. Otherwise, this method is not required. 
Usually, this is when the plate has been left sitting for days after been taken from the bowl and had been sprayed between intervals, which by then, the rust had hardened. Personally, I like the plates fairly rusty so to get different shades of rust at different levels. By scraping away at certain areas around the metal plate, I get different shades of colorization that gives me a livelier look than it being just one plain shade. Of course, this is totally up to you, as everyone has a preference, and therefore, I will leave it up to you to decide the outcome of the end results. This last procedure is not a must, but does blend everything in with the rest of the model. I use three shades of powder pigments, black, gray, and burnt umber. Brushing on a little of each tends to work for me. It may not work for you. Again, it's a preference thing. I say use what you are comfortable with to get the job done. In the end, it's your model and you must be the one to decide if it works and looks good for you. Well, I hope that you enjoyed how to make rusty armor plating. It's actually a pretty easy way of doing it and it, it takes a little bit of time depending upon the type of rust look that you want for your model kit. This video demonstrates one example of how you can make your own scale model canvases and tarps with facial tissue for use with any model kit or diorama. So without further ado, why don't we get to the video? Here are the materials that you will need for this project. Scissors, facial tissue, toilet paper usually proves too porous in appearance for most scales and does not hold up as well as facial tissue when wet. White glue, Elmer's is perfect. A soft paintbrush that is disposable and a small container of water. Begin by cutting the facial tissue into the desired shape and size, fitting it as required. Once you are satisfied with the shape and size, place it in the desired location. Mixing a small amount of white glue and water together in a 50-50 mix, apply the mixture gently to the tissue, taking care to retain the proper positioning. Only mix as much as you will need, one coat at a time, and apply gently. I use an inexpensive soft craft type paintbrush to apply the glue water mix. And as I said before, apply gently. The facial tissue will tear once wet. During the initial coating, be sure to keep the tissue in the desired location, gently fitting it, folding it, and otherwise setting it into its permanent place. Once completely dry, normally taking about 10 minutes, apply another light coat of fresh mix. Then when the coat is dry, apply a third and final coat. I usually mix the second and third coats a little stiffer. Instead of a 50-50 glue water mix, I generally go 60-65% glue to 30-40% water. Once the last coat is dry on the model, I pre-fit all photo etch parts before permanently attaching them. Allow the tissue canvas to completely cure overnight before painting. Be extra cautious if using washes to weather or shade around the tissue canvas while it's drying, as tearing or damage can still occur during the drying process. If not completely cured, your canvas will rehydrate and rip if you are not careful. The canvas cover on this model is now ready for some paint, followed by weathering and shading. With a little time and effort, using a simple technique like this can give you more detail to any model kit. Weathering can greatly enhance any military vehicle model. One of the easiest weathering effects you can recreate is mud. There are several subtle mediums that can be used to recreate mud, such as plaster, resins, and epoxies, but I prefer the use of paper mache for its workability in coloring and application, as well as providing a slower drying time. 
allowing for last minute corrections. I usually add some scale foliage pieces to simulate muddy turf to make the effect more believable. So without further ado, why don't we get to the video. When simulating mud, particularly on AFVs, I have found that Celluclay is a good medium to use. Celluclay is a name brand paper mache product found mainly in the US. It's available as a dry powder. You simply add water to get the consistency you desire. Just apply it and let dry. Here's how I use it to simulate mud so it can be applied to scale models and dioramas. I start out with the following materials. Celluclay brand paper mache, water-based PVA glue, Elmer's white or any carpenter's glue, any type of water-based acrylic paints, resealable glass or plastic container. The first step is to mix the water and celluclay until the consistency is that of partly thawed frozen cookie dough. To your cookie dough, add in your colors. As seen here, I use craft store hobby acrylics. Mix in whatever colors best suit your specific application. Tans for desert, browns for ETO, reds for clay, and so on. The next step is to pull out the amount of mud required for the job and put it into a separate container. Set aside the main portion of the mud for your diorama groundwork that will cover the base. At this point, I mix in some vegetation, giving that chewed up sod effect. A little goes a long way, so not too much. Add in whatever vegetation materials you have, sea foam, static grass, natural herbs, broken small sticks, etc. Anything that may fall on the ground and get stuck in your muddy situation. Once thoroughly mixed, keep covered between applications. The next step is application. I use a variety of tools to apply the mud. There is no standard tool. Whatever feels right is what I use. Various tools may be toothpicks, dental picks, and hobby knives. Go lightly with your application. It is often easier to add to than to remove from. Gently press the mud onto each surface, ensuring proper adhesion. One of the great things about this medium is the slower drying time, allowing for touch-ups and the addition of scale turf, weeds, sticks, etc. Once applied and slightly dried, the mud can be shaded, washed, and highlighted at your discretion. You can also apply darker tones over the lighter colors to simulate fresh mud over older mud. My preferred mixture normally surface dries in about 6 hours and cures completely after about 24 hours. The next series of photos show how, with a little strategic placement, you can make any type of vehicle model kit look like it's been through the mud. 